<sighs> okay, so it has been a while since I have been in front of well, behind behind. It, it's in front of a yeah, in front of a camera. It's been a while since I've been in front of a camera uh, making a video. I think the last time was, geez, uh, I think it was back when the house got broken into. So that was what Christmas time. So goddamn, it's it's been a hot minute since I've been on this end of the camera making a video. So uh, I suppose it has to be a, 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 for a special reason, right? Um, yeah, I think so. So. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, pronouns of all ages, uh, the Millennium Exile book is now live and ready to download as an ebook or as a paperback on Amazon. So that's exciting. Uh, it's finally here. It uh, feels a little bit surreal now um, at the end of it all, and it's it has it, it's been a journey uh, to say the very least. Uh, for those of you who have been very very you know uh, close with me over the many years throughout all of this, you'll know that, that this project nearly broke me on more than one occasion and on many different personal fronts. And, uh, and yeah, you get into something like this, you get into something like this definitely being aware of how hard it's going to be. Because if it was easy, everyone would do it, right? But nothing quite prepared me for just how hard it was and just how heartbreaking that this journey is going to be. Uh, if I'm really loosey-goosey about it, it can sometimes look like things just work out for me, but more often than not, they really don't. And nothing that serves as more of an example of that than the Millennium Exile Project, because from day one, I have tried to be undeniable, you know? Uh, it's been a personal personal philosophy of mine since I started this project to be undeniable and with every step that I took I had that hope you know that I was becoming undeniable and I felt that, that, that that's what I was becoming and that I was getting there like when I first got Harry as an artist uh, involved in the project and people like Elmer and Jordan and all these other crazy talented artists that joined the project started drawing for me I thought to myself there's no way that they can deny my presence, you know? There's no way people can't not see this and get involved. Um, there's no way that people can just sleep on this with this quality of artwork behind me. I knew my story was good, uh, but and you know, with the right artwork, I thought that was not going to be my weakness because I'm not a professional artist. So I started slaving away and paying artists to do that in jobs that I quite frankly hated doing in my personal life. And sure, I got a small fan following, and it was great, but it wasn't the revolutionary <laughs> step forward that I thought it was going to be. And then uh, you switch it up a bit, you know, it goes from becoming a visual art book for presentation purposes uh, and for pitching purposes, and then it becomes a demo reel like a, a production pitch reel. And then you get these, these high caliber voice actors in the actual anime industry. You know, they, they're not just pseudo celebrities, in the actual industry that they're in, they are celebrities. These people attend conventions world around and, and, and pay an, an exorbitant amounts of money to stand in line and get photos of these people and signatures. And then here I was having a one-for-one -one interaction with these people and, and, and working with me and, uh, and I thought to myself, wow, these people, I just idolized their work so much. And when I started hearing their talents voicing my characters, I thought to myself, this is it. This is the moment that things change. And then you get hit with another, another wall in front of your face that stops you from progressing further. And you fail to turn as many heads as what your imagination thinks, you know, like, I was still trying to to blow up, and I was trying to attain some level of, of no, you know notoriety. And with these voice actors, I thought, yep, this is it. This is going to get me noticed. This is going to get eyes on the project. You know, I don't want to become famous. That's not the aim of this thing. The aim is just to become undeniable, to get my product sold 
to a point where I can make this anime and achieve my dream. And the only way I can do that is to get noticed and to make some noise, even if it's me making the noise on my own behalf. But if I can amass some fans behind me to help make noise, then surely that helps, right? And these, I thought when these Fist actors got involved, I thought that was it. And when Kotaku Magazine interviewed me, I thought that was it. And then, you know, you get certain levels, like things go up, but they don't quite hit those explosive heights that you're kind of looking for at the start. And then uh, I needed music. So then I needed to keep on innovating. I needed to keep on getting better and failing forwards and growing and becoming stronger and more undeniable, you know? And so then I needed music for this production. And I, I got this composer who I, I adored the work of and still do. The music itself, it was just phenomenal. And I remember listening to this composer just play this music for for my story, for my demo reel, and listening to just how perfectly everything hit. And uh, you know, this wave of emotion wave you know, rolls over you. And then you think, right, now surely I'm undeniable. But you know, you, you, you keep on going and you keep on innovating and you keep on growing and I was getting bigger and I was getting more fans and then I got a Patreon following that made, you know, life so much easier. I was no longer having to just work some of these terrible jobs that I hated just to, just to, you know, pay for this artwork. I now have a fan base behind me supporting me and donating to the project and that definitely helps. And that, that, that did help and that still continues to help. And, and it was really, really humbling and, you know, it, it, it was amazing. And it still is to think about it to this day. It's an incredible experience that I've had, and it's just it's heartbreaking to to jump through all the hoops that you, that that I had, and to still realise that my resume wasn't standing out from the park. I still wasn't getting an interview, and the couple of interviews I got, you know, they they I, they they ended with a rejection, and that's not even really you know that that it, it bummed me out a little bit, but. I think the people that did reject me, I think that was for the best. I don't think they would have been a great fit for Mighty Megs either. And I think they probably knew that too. I think that we're just trying to do different things and we're not quite, you know, aligned uh, with what we're trying to achieve as far as a business model goes and as far as what the product is that I'm selling. So, and, and I think that worked out for the best. So I'm grateful for the, for the I think there's only one rejection that I've had. But the, the hardest part is not even getting to that point. The hardest part is not even getting the eyes yet, you know, and not finding the right people, not having the right people find you yet. And as your network grows, you start to realize that the more you know, the more you didn't know before. And the disappointment that comes with that is overwhelming, to say the least. Uh, there's no, nothing can prepare you for that other than experience. You can be told it a thousand times and it doesn't really hit home until you experience that for yourself. And when I had these realizations and that when I had to overcome this heartbreak, it was hard. I'm not going to lie. And I just, I remember thinking to myself, even quite recently, How nice must it be to just be content with coming home after a day of work, cracking open a beer and watching the footy, and then going to bed and doing it all again. You know, uh, ignorance is bliss and all that. It's, you know, I, I, I envy people that didn't have such grandiose dreams, uh, or at least dreams that were a little bit closer to earth, you know, um, because I damn near burnt my wings on this one trying to fly too close to the sun and it's been a sobering experience and it's been one full of heartache and personal developments so I've had to give up on trying to get this anime for now it's still very much my dream but I've had to pivot 90 degrees at the 11th hour and start learning how to tell this as a, as a series as a, as a novel 
because the other route of getting this is to go the adaptation way. And so I then had to start learning how to write as a novel, but I thought to myself, you know what? I'll be great at this. I'll be, I'll be, I'm sure I'll be fine telling this as a series of novels because I'm a good storyteller, right? Anyone who's had a conversation with me knows that I can tell a story and get you involved in the world. But it's a very different language when you're writing a book. Uh, I found myself after, uh, uh, during, as I was writing my first draft, I found myself, uh, I don't know if, how many of you have seen uh, uh, Death Note out there, but there's a scene in this anime where this high school boy is doing something very mundane and ordinary like eating a potato chip, but he narrates it himself because he's like doing this diabolical thing, right? And he says it with such gravitas where he's like, I'll take a chip and eat it! And it's this amazingly fucking memed scene all throughout anime. I swear to God, that is exactly how I wrote every single line of the first draft of my book. Everything had such a gravitas. It was like, and then he sat down and twiddled his thumbs between the air. And he just did all the. And I was just. I was using the words regardless and however, like every second or third sentence. And it was so unbelievably bad. But. Man, when, when I first wrapped up that first draft, I was like, Tolkien, and I just called it quits. I was like, I'm done, I'm, I'm fucking Tolkien that shit. I am the, I'm the next coming of storytellers. Like, I, look at me. And I sent that shit off to Kelsey, to a few friends, to a few editors, and I really had, oh my God, did I have to just eat humble pie when all of that came back. Some of the criticisms I got were, were really great, but then others, like the page, like the actual editor, tore my shit to ribbons. Same with Kelsey, same with a few friends, and I still had to eat so much shit without to write a book. And it's been an absolute journey to say the least in, in I must have rewritten. I must have rewrote this book like seven, eight, nine times. Uh, it's, it's, it's. it's I, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with this book. I swear to God. It's, it's been phenomenal. I started this book in October last year, and we're ready to go now. It's going. It's out now. And look, I hope you pick it up. I hope you sell the copy. I hope you enjoy it. I. Uh, yeah. Look, it, it is smaller than I thought that it was going to be. I was a little bit underwhelmed when I sort of got my hands on my own author's copy, and I thought to myself, oh, yeah, it's a little thinner than I thought, but look, don't, don't get me wrong, don't worry about it, because this is very much Harry Potter before Hogwarts, okay? So this is Vincent before Grave. So just chill, don't worry about it. First one's staying low, and I've adjusted the price of the book to reflect that. But the next ones, you know, this, I mean, the price isn't going to be double, but like, you know, the, the book thickness is going from two onwards. They're going to be about twice as thick as this one as we move forward. So this is just the beginning of Vincent's adventure. Like I said, it's very much akin to like Harry Potter before Hogwarts. So, um, look, if you want to pick up a copy, links down below. I really, really appreciate all of the love and support that all of you have given me throughout the years. The donations, the likes, the comments, the shares, the DMs, the motivating pick me up speeches, the suggestions of how to help out, all of it. I really appreciate each and every one of you who has helped in any capacity for this. Um, you guys mean the world to me. I may not be the world's richest man in terms of monetary gain, but I feel like the world's richest man when it comes to quality of people around me. and. You guys have just been awesome. So, uh, look, I really, really love you all. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate you all. Um, yeah, thanks.